Why is studying so dangerous to one's testimony? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And today we have Ben Lundgren. Appreciate Hi. you coming all the way from Logan, or even further north, right? Yeah, yeah. From where? Richmond. Richmond, and yeah. is that really close to the border? Yeah, we're about seven miles from Idaho. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so do you play the lottery up there? <laughs> oh, once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would if I was that close. I'm yeah. Sorry to ask that, but... Uh, <laughs> And are you from there originally, or wh yep. where are you from? I was born and raised in Richmond, never left. Oh my goodness, school yeah. and everything, huh? Yep. Wow. And is it predominantly LDS? Oh yeah, it's the it's settled. The predominant culture yeah. there in a small town is LDS faith. Yeah. So your folks were LDS. And yep. You were born. How many brothers and sisters do you have? So I have two brothers and one sister. Okay. Yep. And as far as you remember, you were just active in the church and. Yep, we <laughs> from the time I was little, we woke up every Sunday morning and Headed got up. ready for church, and it's just what we did. It's just just life, right? Yep. And we're baptized at age eight, I guess. Yep, of course. Scouts and deacon, teacher, priest, and yep. all that stuff. Well, I did the whole spill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's just it's interesting that it becomes our whole life. We don't even know anything else. Did you? Had, do you ever recall meeting a Christian or what we'd call a Christian in up there in your young life? No, I, I don't really ever remember knowing anybody that was not LDS. <laughs> I knew some people that weren't active, yeah. but I yeah. I didn't really know anybody that. Yeah. Classified themselves. Seminary? As a Did you take seminary? Oh yeah, absolutely. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't an option. It wasn't family was encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> should we say? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was release time too, right? Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't wasn't too tough. But yep. do you think you had a testimony of the church? I uh, you know I always thought I did, and I felt I did, but I the more and more I look back at it and think about it, I think a lot of it was I was just betraying everybody else's testimonies because it's what I was used to hearing and seeing. That and is funny. Every every first Sunday of every month, fast and testimony meeting. and Yeah. yeah. And I was never one to really go up and, and bear my testimony or anything. Weren't you? I mean, I, I did once in a great while, but not very often. But, you know, I was so used to sitting there every once a month, every Sunday, you know, listening to these people that just told everybody what they thought and what they knew to be true, and I, I thought and believed it for a while. Kind of reaffirming, isn't it? I mean, you just, it's just, I think it's part of that uh, mindset that the Mormons get, or we all get into, and, and we just accept it, and it's just what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And they figure if you bear your testimony long enough, you'll get one, <laughs> or something like that, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so, and, you know, they always challenge us to bear our testimony, but... I've never really been a public yeah. speaking type of person. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't too much of that either. So yeah. around the campfire, did you ever do that with the young men programs and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. All kind of have to share your testimony and. Yeah, and see that you know, like get scout camps and stuff. They they encourage us to do it, and they're that, those were the times I probably did it, and it was because I. Kind of felt like I had to, or yeah. pressured to, or didn't want to be the only one that didn't do it. Yeah, and Jesus. Uh, I mean, I know you're still young at this time, but uh, Jesus and the Bible and that kind of stuff. What does, what does all that mean to you at this point? You know, I, I really never ever remember studying or reading the Bible. Going to the Mormon church is just wasn't something we did. <laughs> I mean, you took it with. I, I carried it with me, and to this day, I still don't know why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. And and just kind of cherry pick the scriptures that are in there, if, if yeah. there was anything. And yeah, and isn't that funny how oh, we have that? And yeah, and Jesus. Uh, I mean, we talk about him. He's in there somewhere, but he's just not very. F we don't focus on him very much. More about the prophets, don't you think? Oh, and, absolutely. You know, it's just overwhelming thinking about how much time we didn't spend speaking about Jesus yeah. or talking of him. We were more focused on the the living prophets or the past prophets and, you know, yeah. 
not really Jesus. I mean, in the Mormon church, to me, Jesus' time was sacrament, and that was it. Yeah, that, that's right. And then after that, it was anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what happens after high school? And So after high school, um, I actually had met my wife, and we dated for a little while. And yeah. then I was pressured and felt pressured and didn't want to be the lone wolf out in the little city of Richmond not to go on a mission. So I, I put in to go on a, on a mission and, and they called me to go to Seattle, Washington. And I went to the MTC and I just, and I, I didn't want to go. I was pressured. I didn't want to let my parents down. I didn't want to let anybody else down. Mm -hmm. And I got down there and about three days later, I had called my dad to come get me, and it just wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I just couldn't do it. And my dad told me, you know, you need to stick it out a little longer. It, it'll get better. And I just told him, look, you know, you don't understand. I didn't want to go, and I don't, I just can't do it. I, it's not for me. And, well, did any of your other friends feel that same way that you know of? No, I... I've had most of my friends that I hung around with, they went on missions. Um, there's a couple of them now that are completely inactive from the church. I've fallen away from the church. Yeah. So, you know, and then it, some of them pressured me to go. It's going to be a wonderful experience, you know. And <laughs> it just wasn't for me. Well, I know there's some people, and I think the church recognizes this now because now they have a program where if you really don't want to go on a full-time mission, you can do a service mission. Do you think you might have done that if they'd have given you that option up in Richmond? Uh, you know, I, I don't think so. At that time, I just mm. I just didn't want to, I wasn't that involved in church. You know, I had other interests I was pursuing. And and I mean, I was, I was active, but I, it just wasn't my main priority at that time. Mm. Okay. And uh, you say you met your wife was that in high school you'd met her? Or? Yeah, she was She was a little younger than I was. Um, mm -hmm. She's three years younger, so when I was 19, she was 16, 17, and a little young. But, yeah. you know, we'd met and was dating, and she was going to wait for the return missionary to get home from, oh, that's from his mission, you know, and yeah. she just didn't know I was going to come back so soon. <laughs> <laughs> a quick return missionary. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what happens next, I guess? you. So... My dad, he agreed to come get me, and my, my mom came with him, and, and it was... That must have been tough. It was a long drive <laughs> from Provo to Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but we talked about things, and and I'd gotten home, and of course the bishop wanted to meet with me, and just, you know, automatically figured I'd come home because I was doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing, you know. And Well, that's the first reaction, isn't it, that yeah. you, you've got some sin you need to repent of? You know, yeah, and I just told him I said you know that's not the case I just I just got there and it's just not for me yes yeah. you know and I told him I, I think people need to respect that and if someone needs to go on a mission they can be accepted just like the ones that go yeah and so we kind of left it at that and like a week or two later he wanted to meet with me again and he he just told me he said you know I've had some thoughts and and you need to get back on your mission and I told him mm -hmm. I said well I am not going back <laughs> on a mission <laughs> I said, I don't want to let anybody down, but it's not for me. I've tried it, and I'm not. And he flat looked at me and said, if you do not go on a mission, your life will not be successful. And I, I was just blown away. That was the, the first time my faith had actually been challenged like that. That somebody like that would say that. Yeah. Gosh. And it, it made me confused and angry and, you know, all at the same time. And I yeah. didn't understand it, and I just... You know, I knew people that hadn't gone on missions, and they they were good people. Yeah, I'm including many of our general authorities haven't gone on missions, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So you that caused you to think a little bit, I guess, and then you met with the state president too, right? I did, and this this was recently. It's only been well, maybe two years or so ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So you know, after the mission thing, I I I was inactive. I didn't really attend church or nothing, and then um, my wife and I got married. She was 18, and I was 21. Okay. We got married in the in a church house, not okay. not the temple. Yeah, it's since been sealed. Yeah, in the temple. Yeah, we did end up going through the through the temple, and 
you know, again, we, we tried the church thing off and on and went to church, and then I'd go inactive for a while. And now, go has back she been active all her? Uh, her younger years, she was never really active. Her mom's a single parent, and so she, her mom worked a lot, so she it was her choice if she went to church or not. I see. So we, we did the church thing off and on, and when we had our first two kids is when we decided to go through the temple, and we did it. And, you know, we never really went back to the temple other than just to be sealed. It just wasn't our thing to to go do the temple thing. I mean, <laughs> it was it was a little different to me, but I did it. Well, it's interesting. That it just sounds like this hasn't ever fit you very well. <laughs> no, and it hasn't. You know, I just... Sometimes I just fell out of place, or I wasn't the the cool cat, you know. And, yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. So. And did you take a lot of pressure for this in family and f friends gatherings and stuff? Yeah, I there? did. I, I'd have people write me letters and tell me encourage you and yeah, <laughs> or and, condemn you. <laughs> and you know, people, sometimes people don't realize when they do that, it just pushes them more and more away. Yeah, you know, and good intentions. Good, maybe, good or... intentions, but it just to the right person, it just doesn't help. <laughs> so yeah, it was, uh, well, I can't so, imagine I'm being in a small community like that too. It must be yeah, it was more challenging. And you stayed there. Yeah, I I've stayed there, and well, I'm proud of you for <laughs> having the courage. I mean, I kind of, I guess I had little things that questions here and there but I just kept going through and yeah you know just that's what I was expected to do and mm -hmm. some things yeah um so you've now have, have how many children do you have I have four I have one boy yeah. and three four girls little. okay yeah. and so when you tried to go back to the church what did you was it just to see if it works this time or to was um, it, what was the motivation there I, I think a lot of it was I, I believed in God, I believed in Jesus, hmm. but I just didn't know what to extent, and I, I wanted my kids to to have some to have some sort of testimony, you know, yeah. uh, that I didn't want them growing up not believing in God. Yeah. So that was a lot of the motive. Was going back to church was for my kids. Okay. You know, and the more and more we went back, <laughs> I hated it because I'd be inactive for so long. I wouldn't have a calling, and then. Right. I'd go for a month straight, and then the bishop would want to meet with me and give me a calling, you know. <laughs> and I'm I'm too big of a sucker to say no. Okay. So I the one the last time when I was active, they wanted me to be the deacon's quorum advisor. Yeah. And I I did it for like six months, and then just something hit me, and I just I could not do it any longer. Trying to teach what maybe you didn't really have a yeah for a strong testimony yeah. about. And you know I thought when I was teaching them that maybe it would help me, that it would spark something in me. Right. And it just never did. I I just finally, one Sunday, I said, I, I cannot teach some kids, some young kids, something I don't believe in. So it was just, it wasn't because you'd filled it in with any anti-Mormon information? No. It was just at this point, or, or uh, was there? About that time, you know, I, I had worked for a, a small city on the north end, and I had some some bosses and city council members that were all Mormon, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and they and they some of them had high up callings within the stake. Yeah, and just sometimes the way they would treat me really challenged me <laughs> because I put in my little transformation letter that I, I did a little test, and I I'd go to church. And they'd treat me wonderful. <laughs> it was night and day different. And then I'd quit going. And then it wasn't so nice. <laughs> it wasn't so nice. And and that was about the time I was the deacon's quorum advisor. And it yeah. it broke my faith there. And so then I started researching some church history. I found the CES letter. I was going to ask you about that. What? Uh, how did you run across that? And did what did it say to you when you started reading it? Um, I think. Things that you'd ever heard before? No, you know, because we're trained not to look at things that <laughs> go against the church teachings. Again, back to studying being so dangerous. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> right. And I, I can't remember how I ran across it, but I ran across it and I started reading it. I mean, because it's, it's a lot of pages. Yeah. And I just started reading it and I, I was just blown away. And I was, it, it just, 
it was crazy. Yeah. And I, I thought a long time about it. And I, even in some of the references he gave in the letter about certain things, I would look them up and find the same find answers he did. True. <laughs> and no answers really for the, the questions that are raised. And yeah. So many, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I, I didn't want to belong to something that was a fabricated religion. Yeah. You know, because if it's fabricated, to me, you know, you're not going to have God with you if it's a fabricated religion. How long were you going through this process? Oh, geez. After that, I don't think I ever stepped in a church house for probably three or four years. Mm. We are just completely inactive, didn't go to church, you know, like, People stop by, invite us to church, you know, and they yeah. missed us, blah, blah. Still believing in God and Jesus, are you? Yeah, you know, and... Now, the Bible doesn't mean much more now at this time in your life than it did before, I guess. No, because yeah. even in this period of time, I didn't even think to pick up the Bible and read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why would you? I mean, we weren't taught that in, yeah. in Mormonism, that there's any answers in there. Yeah. It's not translated correctly, so you know, yeah. we can't trust it, so... yeah. Isn't that crazy? So I just... It, it was didn't never even, even a thought. Yeah, it didn't even dawn on me to pick up the Bible and read it. It just never did. <laughs> well, praise God you finally did. But yeah. uh, so then what happens? So in this period, you know, from about the time I come home from my mission, you know, I suffered with depression and and I had acquired quite an alcoholic rage for, oh, did you? you know, 10, 10 or so years. And the functioning uh, drinking, you mean? Or yeah, you know, I uh, something would bother me and I have problems, and I'd turn to alcohol. Mm. And I thought it helped. Yeah, it helped at the moment, but the next morning my problems were still there. <laughs> Funny and, how that happens. <laughs> yeah, and it was just crazy, and I just started spiraling down the wrong path. And you know, I just told the wife one day. I said, you know, I really think we ought to find a church and go to it and just try it. Really? And if it's not for us, if it doesn't fit, then I guess we won't go to church. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened? So I started researching Christian churches in our in our uh, area, which there's not a whole lot. <laughs> right. And I kept running across one in North Logan, and they have podcasts. And I was listening to podcasts in, on my stereo when I was at work, and and it just something just felt right about it. What kind of a message were you hearing? Oh, it's just everything to do with Jesus, you know? <laughs> That's shocking. <laughs> I mean, Jesus loves you. Jesus will do anything for you, you know? Just anything to do with Jesus. And he was talking straight out of the Bible. Everything he was yeah. preaching came straight out of the Bible. That's fantastic. And so... I actually had a, a friend, a, an acquaintance that I was teaching a class at the time. I kind of Facebook stalked him, and <laughs> and he went to that church, and I just asked him about it, and he said, yeah, come on, you know, I'll, I'll meet you there Sunday. I'll Same see you one there. that you were listening to podcasts. And, yeah. yeah. And so I, I went, and that was... Did Corey go with you? Yeah. She yeah. did. Took the whole family, and that was last April, so we've been going faithfully for the last year. Just for the year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and what, again, just to repeat, but the message that you're hearing there is? Oh, it's it's incredible. I mean, we learn about Jesus. and The songs are about Jesus. The songs <laughs> are about Jesus. Everything we do is about Jesus. My my kids learn in, in uh, preschool and kids' church that, about Jesus. Do they enjoy going? They do. They actually love it. <laughs> You know, and that's, I guess I was naive, of course I was, but the, I didn't know, that, I didn't even think that the Christians had any kind of stuff for kids or yeah, or really had a message for me either, but uh, it's amazing, they do. Yeah, yeah. And, and I had the same thoughts, you know, like, well, do they have kids activities, you know, because my boy liked going to scouts and, and, and they do youth all... activities and they do all that. Yeah. Isn't that... <laughs> it's just, it's been a blessing. Oh. Yeah. So what does Jesus mean now? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Jesus is everything. Yeah. He's, he's changed my life. Uh, when I used to just be an ornery, miserable young fart, <laughs> I thought nothing else could get any worse. Yeah. Well, Jesus came along and, and I'm happier 
and I am who I am and I don't care if people like me or they don't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just, as long as I have Jesus and my family, I'm happy. There's a freedom though, isn't there? Do you feel that? Oh, yeah. And, and a, a joy, I call it too, but a freedom and liberty in, in trusting in, in Jesus. And Yeah, and you know, the thing for me is, you know, I don't have to work very darn hard for Jesus to love me. I, but now I'm there doing it. I, I do try to work hard for it because, right, because you I don't feel like I deserve it. Right. But we don't. It's but, easy, you know. Yeah. All you got to do is believe in Him and trust in Him, and and He'll help you every step of the way. Now we were talking a little bit before this about being born again, mm -hmm. and I think we share kind of a similar story here. We don't. You don't feel like maybe you've had that moment, uh, or do you? You feel like there was something that happened to you that said, "Okay, I'm I'm now a new new person in Christ." Yeah, and you know I do, and I don't know exact. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know exactly what it was, but it, it was around Christmas time. I was just an emotional basket case. I don't know what it was, but uh, my wife's Christmas family Christmas party was on Christmas Eve. And just our, this last Christmas. Yeah. You know, okay. And our church was doing the Christmas Eve service and. And I told her, I said, I hope you're not going to be mad at me, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave for a little while. I feel like I need to be there. Skip the family thing and go to church. Yep. And Does that sound like Ben? No, <laughs> no. That, that's like the first church church function I can think of that I would actually want to go to by myself. Yeah. And I went, and man, it was just incredible. It was amazing. You know, the people are just amazing they want to be there they want to worship they want Christ to be there yeah yeah I, I've yet to meet, meet anybody that just is like oh I don't really want to be here because they don't have to be there <laughs> yeah. right yeah isn't that amazing and so I you know it just it was a crazy experience and it, it did change me and it made me realize what Jesus does mean to me praise God yeah did you ever understand grace no absolutely not not As, yeah. What what does it mean now to you? Oh, grace is the greatest gift is. anybody could ever receive. Yeah, and that you know you don't really talk about grace in the LDS Church, and it's all you know grace to them is by all their work. Yeah, to get there. Yeah, when it's really not, uh, Jesus did it all. It's a gift. Yeah, He gave it to us on the cross, and they just don't understand that. No, and. I don't know what it takes to switch, make that little switch in our brains, but I know it happened to me eventually, yeah. and uh, obviously happened to you. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's just a, a glorious message, and and you've been able to share this with your family. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's it's been a good experience. You know, I was terrified at first to tell my my parents. I was going to ask about <laughs> that. Is that uh, has that been hard? You know, it hasn't been as hard as I thought it'd be. You know, really? um, my parents—they're not as active as they have had been in my younger days, and mm. you know, just well, it's a funny story. But <laughs> at first, you know, we didn't really want—we didn't want to advertise we were going to a different church because we didn't know if it was going to work out or not. Right. And it worked, and we'd been going, and my kids had been up to my parents' house, and <laughs> and uh, my mom had come down, and she says. You know, I know. I said, you know what? I played stupid. And she said, Bentley, my little girl, told me that you guys go to a different church, but not to tell anybody because it's a secret. Thanks, Bentley. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and it was good. We talked about it for a minute. And she just told me, she says, you know what? If it makes you happy, then I'm happy. She says, I've noticed a change in you, and I can see it that you're oh, happier. So, that's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's what a mom should do, and yeah. a dad. Huh? Yep. And you said they even came to a a church function or something? And... Yeah, so one, we do testimonies once a year, and it's usually around Thanksgiving. And one of the gentlemen giving his testimony actually worked for my dad. And so I invited my dad said, hey, this guy's going to be sharing his testimony. Why don't you come, you know, check it out? And he did. And he's come a few times after that just to... Kind of see what it's all about. And, wow. Yeah. So that might, uh, you never know. You, I yeah. mean, you just never know. You never know. <laughs> and Jesus can do it. Yeah. I mean, you hear that message about Jesus and it, uh, 
eventually it, it hopefully sticks. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that has struck with them as seeing what we worship. You know, we're not as bad as people as where you are portrayed to be. <laughs> Uh, I was, we talked a little bit earlier, you got baptized. Yeah, so last, week. last Sunday, me and the, my wife, we got baptized on Easter Sunday. Oh, so that's it was special. So an incredible experience. And, and we don't do that, why do we do that? <laughs> all it is is a just a public expression of your faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. It, it does not wash your sins away. No, Jesus did that. Jesus did that. It doesn't save you. No. Jesus did that. No, nope, it's just... It's uh, not about us at all. Express that you're a believer in Jesus. Yeah. That's basically all it's for. Well, it's a glorious message. Well, as we kind of do it sometimes at the end, I give you an opportunity to say something to your family, your kids, your family, your mom and dad, and brothers and sister, as I remember it. Uh, anything you want to say? Yeah, I, I think I'd just say, you know, be who you are, and a little research, believe it or not, is it's good. It, <laughs> it can be good, because there'd be nothing worse than being disappointed when you get to the other side, because... Wouldn't that, just because you didn't look? Yeah. Or think? I think there's a lot of things to look into, and unfortunately for the church and various other things, you know, there's a lot of information out there on the internet. Yeah. And, you know, I've been a happier person since then. And I know if you're struggling that you can be happy too. And you, you just need to really get on your knees and pray to God. And he'll, he'll guide you to the right, right spot. Yeah. And everyone can have happiness and no regrets, <laughs> no, no deep dooming thoughts. And, you know, <sighs> you, can, you can be happy. Yeah, even being yourself and even being different. Well, it sounds like you face some challenges, and I'm again, I'm really proud of you for facing those, being stand-up guy, but also yeah. being willing to to listen to the spirit when it uh, came and tapped you on the shoulder or yeah. slapped you in the face or whatever it did. It kind of slapped me in the face <laughs> and yeah. said, "Hey, you know what? There's something more here." Yeah, 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 for sure. It's it's been a amazing journey, and I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah. Well, I'm sure glad. Appreciate you coming down and sharing your story. And yeah. We'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>